Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming on the Onyx Path Publishing YouTube channel. The man with the glaze expression on my right. Fixed. Sorry, Rictus Grin. Rictus Grin, that's what he prefers. Is Neil Raymond Price, our Uber developer of Scion 2nd Edition. And behold, there it is right behind us. It's true. Mm. I prefer Primus Inter Pares. Do you? Yeah. Well, that's nice to know. <laughs> and we're for a very, for a very short interview. Neil and I, uh, I think this actually may be the first time we have been on a video or podcast together because I wasn't on the interview with you on the podcast. No. And yet this is not our first project together. One of, I guess, the most critically acclaimed releases in recent years from Onyx Park Publishing was Beckett's Jihad Diary. And these two people are the co-developers. It's true. Yeah, Neil was the first hand, I was the second hand, and we came together and made a half-decent project that was fairly well received. Seemed to be. Yeah. People seemed to be enjoying it, so... Yeah, it's uh, selling well here. <laughs> so I thought I'd do a brief interview here, as I have Neil at my side, and ask five very simple questions. They may be on pertinent to the convention, they may not. But first of all, we've got Scion 2nd Edition behind us. Have you received any questions about Scion, any hype about Scion at this convention? And what kind of feedback are you getting based on people's reading? Uh, a lot of... Um, I've gotten a lot of people who are very pleased with the respect we showed Pantheons. We, um, it's important to... It's important when you're doing pantheons, essentially. These are people's culture. These are people's literal religion mm. um, in, in many cases. Even if there's not a living culture who, say, worships the Norse gods or worships you know, the, the Greco-Roman gods, and the, although there are people who still do, yeah. um, it's still important to take that with, treat it with dignity or at least as much dignity as the myths themselves mm. portray. There are some pretty risque and stupid myths out there. But... Um, we at this convention, uh, I would be remiss if we didn't announce if, we, if I didn't mention that we had announced two other Scion books. Essentially, uh, one is Dragon, which is a full, uh, uh, which, which is a, a full almost four book sized book, um, talking about playing the roles of mythological creatures. You know, primarily dragons, obviously, in the title. And then um, the other one is called Mass of the Mythos, mm. which is going to be developed by uh, Chris Spivey. Any award-winning. Any award-winning Chris Spivey, uh, who I've worked with on Harlem Unbound. And I worked with on Chicago by Night. Yep. Um, Mass of the Mythos is going to be um, a, a sort of alternate setting for Scion, where you are playing um, actual physical descendants of the great old ones of, of the, the Cthulhu gods. And you are working to, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a much more horrific take in the, mm. in the horror genre on Scion that we generally have in the game itself. Okay. Well, you kind of gazumped my next question because you talked about the announcement. So I'm going to ask you something different on the fly. <laughs> okay. And it's the kind of question you may get asked occasionally about mechanics. Mechanics sure. and Scion. Um, we were just discussing with a fan the story path system and how it's formed the basis for Scion, for Trinity behind us as well, for Dystopia Rising behind us, and they came from beneath the sea. And Neil is one of the integral players in the development of the story path system. What's your favorite aspect of story path? Story path. Um, gosh. I really like the, uh, the way the dramatic editing turned out. Dramatic editing was a, a, a mechanical concept that was first introduced in Adventure with a with an exclamation point. That always improves the game, having an exclamation mark. I I would imagine you would think so. Yeah. So, um, a, a Adventure was White Wolf's pulp game uh, back in the day, and part of the, the what is now the Trinity Continuum. Um, dramatic editing provided people. Uh, for players with the means to sort of edit the setting around them um, to retcon little things like if they uh, the assassin coming to kill you is actually your grade school best friend and he tearingly cannot kill you cannot find himself able to kill you um, and you spent in character resources to do that uh, which led to a weird divide is this a meta mechanic or is this an in setting mechanic and I knew that in Scion with, with the way that fate works and I knew that Trinity because of what's going to have to have dramatic editing um, was going to need that mechanic pretty solid, but also able to be flipped between in setting and out of setting, whether it's meta or not. And one of the things I loved is seeing how that's grown into the different versions of Storypath in, in DR, uh, but especially in They Came From, where yeah. many of the powers are 
essentially meta, but within the fictionality of that, of, of the B-movie. Yeah, in a way it was a happy coincidence with they came from beneath the sea, because I always wanted to put cinematics, which were your meta powers, powers your characters are completely unaware of, but the players can use to delete scenes, insert extras, insert stuntmen, that sort of thing. And we've got a couple of aspects, and they came from a, known as directorial control, which is very much yep. your cinema, your dramatic editing at a raw level, and then you have your cinematics that are your more sp focused, your bespoke powers. Yeah, I, I and, yeah, I love seeing how those grew out of it. Yeah, so. it's well, they gel together remarkably well. So yeah, I'm glad that was a good answer. Yes. All right, so let's let's go off the beaten track of story path and sound. Let's talk about the, our project, Beckett's Jihad Diary. Okay. Which is still very popular. V5 is out, of course, but Beckett Jihad Diary, that bridge product, as it's often known, from V20 to V5, still very popular. Pick a chapter, which is your favourite. Oh. Pick a favourite child, Neil. Is it one I wrote? Uh, uh, you wrote some very good chapters. Do you I, I can say this isn't going to go well for me. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to take the very cheap answer and say that the... Um, uh, Carthago Delenda S is my favorite, the one I wrote. Yeah, yeah, fancy one. One of the ones I wrote, yeah. <laughs> um, I got my start in Vampire, um, uh, playing Vampire the Masquerade Redemption, which is the first Vampire the Masquerade video game, other than Bloodlines. Um, and uh, I, I had no idea what, what Vampire was, I had no idea what role-playing games were, and that's what got me into Vampire, it's what got me into the industry, it's what, it's what started the whole mess. And... Um, uh, being able to revisit those characters and and, and, and make them talk with my voice uh, was just an incredible experience, and it's something I'm very grateful for, and something I'm very happy about. Mm. Being able to, to bring them back in the limelight one last time. Okay. Fourth question. Uh, of the your upcoming work, because we're all very busy, and you've got a lot of assignments, they don't have to be Onyx Path specific. Mm. What are you most excited about working on in the coming month? Oh, that I can talk about. Mm. There's, there's, a, there's a number of things I can't talk about. Um, I'm actually most excited for Mummy to come out because, um, as Matthew said, I had a vested interest in it. I was, I was fascinated by the Mummy, um, the Mummy uh, meta plot. I was, I was, I was incredibly interested by the way uh, you could play these immortals who are, who are sort of existing a long, a long period of time. Um, but first edition had a lot of uh, uh, extremely interesting high concept themes that didn't always match what was happening at the table. And the ability to go back in the second edition and, and merge the two and rework them from the ground up is great. It's something we've done for a lot of our different lines. We did it for, for Vampire, we did it for Changeling, we did it for Geist. And we're going to do it for Mummy. Mm. And being able, you know, the, the work that everyone did on Mummy first edition was incredible, as they were on all of the first editions. Um, you, you know, it, 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 we stand on the shoulders of giants when we do those sorts of things. So it's important to recognize that, but it's also important to be able to shoot higher. Okay. Eventually someone will stand on our shoulders. Last question. Is Megan Fitzgerald the best developer at Onyx Path Publishing? She is. Uh, Megan develops roughly 17 and a half projects for Onyx Path. <laughs> she does a phenomenal job with all of them. Um, I was watching her do Red Lines earlier, and she puts such incredible care and thought and revision into each and every line that she goes down in a piece, and much more than I do. So <laughs> You can tell. Oh! Oh! Uh, Changing the Lost uh, second edition was one of Megan's. In fact, I think it was Megan's first development gig, and that's a big gig to take on. It was. And it's selling well here. The Kickstarter backers have received it so uh, graciously, so thankfully, and we've received very little criticism uh, for this game. It's been all but praise. Even, uh, even all, for the stuff I wrote. Yeah, I mean, can you believe it? And a lot of that it goes down to two people, Megan Fitzgerald and Rose Bailey. It's true. And with Rose concentrating quite heavily on her own products uh, via her Patreon, um, uh, we will uh, squeeze Megan for all we can, all of the development work we can. She's an excellent writer, excellent developer, and look forward to her work on Contagion Chronicle and Mummy the Curse as well coming up because she's a fantastic person. A wonder. Megan, if you're watching this, thank you very much. We're both thank very you, Megan. grateful. 
And thank you very much, everyone, for watching this very short interview, impromptu. But thank you for Neil, Neil, for participating. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs>